Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. It's time for another Stampa Stack. We have the Berry Christmas Stampa Stack class, and there are a few packets that will go into the store on Monday with the release of this video. So while supplies last, go to KitchenTableStamper.com slash shop, and then filter for class packets. Your filter is either on the right-hand side if you're looking at a computer, or at the bottom, if you're on a mobile device, and you can see if we have a few of the class packets left for you to stamp along. The class packet makes seven cards. We're gonna do this design first. It makes four of this design. You can see the layout is the same. We just decorated them a little bit different. This is our first card. We're gonna make this one today. And it makes three of this design. I'll be back tomorrow with a second video for you. All right, so these are Wonder Recipe Stampa Stack card class, and we are using Wonder Recipe number 19 and number five. What's a Wonder Recipe, you ask? Well, it's a one sheet wonder cutting diagram for six by six designer series paper. So to make this card class, we're going to grab some designer series paper from our packet, choose three patterns that you like, and I am going to do the same ones, but you can mix and match. You get two of each of the Berry Christmas designer series paper. I'm going to do this and this, and I liked it with this one, this one. But you can choose whichever three you like. We're going to cut two of our papers according to Wonder Recipe number 19, which is going to yield these pieces. You'll get two one by three pieces and three two by five pieces from each of two designs. And then we're gonna cut our third design according to Wonder Recipe number five. Let's go ahead and do that. When we deal out the pieces, it'll make seven cards with no waste. All right, so I've got my Stampin' Up! trimmer. We're gonna cut the first one. We're gonna cut at three, right down the middle, and then flip, rotate, and cut at three again. And that is our first piece of designer series paper. And I just put them on the grid, and then stack the grid. Um, when we deal the pieces out from it, they're all right there, easy to find. All right, now Wonder Recipe number 19. I'm gonna go ahead and cut at one inch. Let's see here, hold on, we're up against the thing. At one inch on the left ruler. And we'll hold on to these for just a minute. And then we're gonna cut this one into three two by five pieces. We're doing two sheets at a time. Now you can use one Wonder Recipe with one sheet. You can use one Wonder Recipe with two sheets. You can use different Wonder Recipes and mix and match the pieces. As you play with these cutting diagrams and make cards, you'll start to see the possibilities for multiple sheets, making more cards, multiple patterns for more layouts. They really are a whole lot of fun. All right, so our last piece was one by six, and we cut it into one by three. For our first design, we're going to take these four three by three pieces and we're gonna combine them with the one by three pieces. All right, hold on to that idea for just a second. We're gonna stack this up because the what I like to do with designer series paper is I love to layer it on top of an embossed card base. So this stamp stack makes seven cards and we're gonna go ahead and emboss all seven cards at one time. And we're gonna use this Christmas Tidings embossing folder. You can use whatever embossing folder you have. You can stamp in the background using a background stamp or some snowflakes, whatever you want to add a little bit of texture to your card base before we go ahead and adhere the designer series paper. 
So we're doing this in true Stampa Stack style. So by the magic of television, all of my packets have been embossed except for this one. So let's go ahead and do that. And I want to show you this Christmas tidings folder too, because it is a directional folder, which is a little bit different. And we have um, landscape and portrait oriented card fronts. So let me show you what I mean here. We're going to get our machine set up for embossing with a standard folder. So we'll have one and then three and three. Take two out. We don't need that one. When you look at this folder, you'll see that the words all go horizontal and vertically, but there's only two directions where you can use this folder. So either this way for a portrait card and then your horizontal words read properly. If you did it, hor if you did it this way for a portrait card, your horizontal words would read upside down. See, for a landscape card, there's this way and your words, horizontal words read right side up and your little gingerbread dude is right side up. If you embossed it from the other side, when you folded your card, your words would be upside down and so would your gingerbread. So because it has a definite portrait orientation and a definite landscape orientation, when you emboss your card front, you want to be aware of whether you're doing a landscape card or a portrait card and orient the folder accordingly. All right, so we are doing a landscape card. So we want our folder. I'm just laying the folder over the top and I'm gonna imagine the card is folded. When this card is folded, my gingerbread is gonna be right side up and so are my words, right? If I was doing a portrait card, I would lay the folder over. Imagine that my card is um, folding and opening portrait style and then my words that my words are reading right side up in the horizontal orientation okay so it's going to be different depending on which one and um this is one of those ask me how i know moments so i just thought it was worth taking a, a few minutes to to show you so we're going to do our landscape orientation and i'm going to pop the full card front into the folder I'm going to line this up very carefully inside my machine so that the fold on the folder is perfectly in line with the plate and the platform. Then I'll add the other platform over top or the other cutting plate over top. And then as I get this started in the machine, I'm going to be very careful that nothing rubs against either side of the machine. If this edge scrapes across the side of the machine, you'll take the fold right off of your folder. So if you are hesitant, if you do this technique with care, and if you're hesitant, then you could take a balmy blue card front, like four by five and a quarter, and emboss that and then glue it to the card. What happens though is that does add a substantial weight to your card and in the US, you don't want to go over one ounce. Otherwise, you have to use a special, more expensive stamp. So I do this all the time. You just have to do it very carefully. And you'll see we were careful with the orientation of our folder. And now we've got our landscape card. And you can see our gingerbread is heads up and our words read horizontal and right side up. All right, so now that we've got all of our card fronts embossed and we've got them embossed with the proper orientation, we're going to adhere our designer series paper for the landscape design we're going to deal out our pieces for each of our four landscape designs i'm going to use some liquid glue to adhere my pieces now you'll notice one little detail on the edge of our one by three inch piece I've got this little pop of cardstock color it's just a little um, 
element that adds a little something extra. And if you're cutting your own packets, these, this is the, done with the handmade tags punch. And we did these for you. If you got the class packet, you'll find that you have in your envelopes two envelopes with the old olive half handmade tag and two envelopes with Knight of Navy. And we want these at this stage of the game because we're going to tuck them underneath the designer series paper. All right, so our pieces, we've got our Wonder Recipe number five and our Wonder Recipe number 19 up here. And I'm going to take each card and put a piece. So for our multicolor pattern, we're gonna put a little Knight of Navy scallop under the edge and for our blue snowflake pattern we're going to put a little old olive um, scallop piece under the edge and then each of them gets a three by three piece of this nordic stripe all right so let's go ahead and we'll glue those down and then we'll repeat for the other two cards the other two landscape cards I like to do this like this. I'll take my scallop, my half square, and then attach it to my one by three piece. With a little liquid glue, it gives you some time to slide it and make sure that it's on there nice and straight. And then I'll take my three by three piece And I'll add the three by three piece and we're looking for equal left and right top and bottom margins and there is our first card second card same way and now we're going to repeat for the other two cards okay that's our last piece from the wonder recipe number five diagram go ahead and add the last one by three piece and we'll get these nice and level i like the liquid glue because it gives me time to slide my pieces and can move them right or left level them out and there is our first design now our second design is going to use the remaining two by five pieces so we'll just put the wonder recipe aside right on the grid and let's take a look at what we've got in the packet. We did your die cutting. Each of these has a deckled circle. If you're looking for um, the deckled circle, it is, let me show you. I love this new die set. I haven't made a die chart for it yet. If you know Kitchen Table Stamper, I like to do the die chart so you can see exactly which one I used. But this is one, two, three, four, five, the sixth one and the size of it, if you don't have the deckled circles yet uh, and you're replacing or looking for something, is about two and three quarters of an inch. So we did those ahead for you from basic white cardstock, one for each of the cards. You're gonna go ahead and adhere that covering the seam between your designer series papers. We're gonna get some ribbon from our class packet. We've got the bordered navy ribbon and you're gonna need about 15 inches for each card. And what I like to do with this is just kind of lay it onto the card, swoop back and forth. And when you got it kind of how you like it, then you're gonna use some tear and tape adhesive and put the ribbon down on the card. I think I like that pretty well. And this will also help to adhere our circle. Make sure that it covers the ribbon, but isn't wider than your circle, otherwise you'll have sticky edges. You can remove the adhesive liner, add a little bit of liquid glue to your circle, and then just pop that on so that it's centered top to bottom and a little bit left of center to cover 
the seam on your designer series papers. All right, let's do some stamping. Today, in this video, we're gonna stamp and punch our bear, our presents in our tree. We're gonna do this Warm Wishes design. This is another way that I did this Warm Wishes design. So two trees and then the seated bear and the little bear. Tomorrow when I come back, we're going to do the seated bear and the little bear for this design. So I'm just going to do the elements for this one today. Tune in tomorrow and we'll do this card with the little elements here. Okay, so we're gonna do our packet. Where is my packet? There's my packet. You're gonna have cardstock for all of your stamping. You'll have um, Sweet Sorbet and Balmy Blue, Basic White and Old Olive. And we're gonna stamp our elements for this Stampa stack with color buddies, kind of tone on tone to get that really cool uh, bold effect. So our ink is Night of Navy, Real Red, and Old Olive. Very cute is a photopolymer stamp set, so we need our stamp and pierce mat, and it can be bundled with the Bear Punch in this catalog to save 10%. All right, so for our bear design today, we've got Poppy Parade and we're gonna stamp in real red. So color buddies, our ink is a darker shade than our cardstock, and it's gonna give us a nice bold effect. You'll do one for each card that you're going to decorate with these elements. You'll see that these elements are a little bit different. Both pictures will be in your project sheet and on the blog for you to copy however you like. You can do all four of your cards with this layout of elements, or you could do all four with this, or you could do like I did and do half and half. All right, then for Balmy Blue, we're going to stamp Knight of Navy. So with our color buddy elements, we need a hat and scarf for our bear. When I'm doing a stamp -a stack, and I'm preparing, I do all of my hats and all of my scarves and all of my, I count up how many I want, how many I need. I stamp them all in the colors that I need. Then I fussy cut them all or punch them all or die cut them all. So I suggest if you're doing the stamp a stack that you do the same thing. But for the one that we're doing today, we need a hat, a scarf and a snowflake. And then a little present. Gotta find my little present. There we go. All Night of Navy on Balmy Blue. We're gonna swipe off our present stamp and switch to Old Olive. And we're gonna stamp Old Olive on Old Olive. You could use um, Mossy Meadow here if you wanna keep with that color buddies, but I found that Old Olive on Old Olive is enough contrast. We get a nice pop. And I've also found that my old olive ink pad um, just lasts. It's, it's a nicer um, color formulation. The pigments don't dry out and get crusty. So I would highly recommend that you use the, the old olive or that if you're trying to decide between one or the other, purchase the old olive. The uh, mossy meadow pigments have gotten a little dry and crusty. I've had to replace my ink pad a couple times and I've kind of given up on it. So um, you always get an honest review here at Kitchen Table Stamper. All right, so we did our trees. Um, oh, we only need one for this design, but if you're doing the other design, you'll want to do two trees. And I did the outline and then I'll take my bows, my detail, just line it right up inside. And there's our trees. I think another um, fun detail on this stamp -a stack is our polar bears are stamped on basic white, but I stamped them with Knight of Navy. And I really love how uh, this looks for the stamp -a stack. It's a little bit artistic. You might tend to grab like a memento tuxedo black for polar bears, but for this um, 
stamp a stack the Knight of Navy bears look really cool. So we're gonna stamp at the bottom edge of the paper because this bear can be punched out. And I'm gonna stamp my warm wishes greeting. And we're gonna, we're gonna bubble cut this one. And that is our stamping for this sample. Let's go ahead and clear away the ink pads. We'll get to stamping and punching, or we'll get to fussy cutting and punching. All right, when I'm fussy cutting these elements, I'm going to leave a little color border past the line for all of them. Because when we punch out that bear, he's gonna have a little white border all around. So if our elements, our fussy cut elements were cut right on the line, we'd have a weird um, contrast between the, the two different styles. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just go right around. The presents are super easy. They're nice straight edges and then a little bubble. When you're fussy cutting, you want to put your thumb in the top loop and either your ring finger or your middle finger in the bottom loop. You open and close the scissors. Their bottom blade is well supported by either your index finger or index and middle finger. And then you're going to turn the paper when you cut, not the scissors. When we bubble cut our words, we'll cut them apart first and then just cut with a white border and you really just wiggle the sentiment right into the scissors as it closes. All right, well, you're on letters like the M and warm and the H and wishes, you can do just a little slice in to the letter if you want to, or just skip it all together and cut straight across. It's gonna go on that white background, that deckled circle, so it's gonna look nice either way. You don't have to get really um, tight on this. It, you can go a little more bubble cut and it's still gonna look really great. All right, let me finish cutting the rest of these elements. All right, there we go. Let's punch our polar bear. If you're making a lot of these cards um, for your Christmas cards, you might want to do this design over this design because you can punch this standing bear. So let me show you. I love this little dude. He's just so cute. And as much as I love to fussy cut when you need to make a lot of cards, for the holiday season or make a lot of cards fast. A punch bundle, there's just nothing like it. Just stamp, punch. You can do a lot more of those cards quickly with the punch. I liked the variety of bears though because it is just too much fun to make these cards. All right, oh, one last little present. I almost forgot one. There we go. All right, let's get our liquid glue and dimensionals. I'm going to adhere my tree first. It's going to go up off the edge. And then my bear. I love these edges. So I'm going to cut a skinny little strip. And then I'm going to cut the edge here for my bear. I'm going to add a little dot of glue on the back of the hat. Oh, I've got a little bit bigger dot of glue than I had intended, so I'll pick some of that up on the scarf. And we're gonna put the scarf on the bear, and then the hat on the bear. So paper doll dress up first. Let's make him cute, get his, get his clothes on. Then I like to flip him over and take this little edge piece and just reinforce the hat on the head. Put a couple of dimensionals on the back of him. Oh, he's cute. All right, peel and stick. You'll notice I didn't put any dimensional under that front paw because we're gonna add him on and then we're going to put some glue on our bigger present, our big red present. Put that right under his paw. He's bringing that one to the party. 
couple more dimensionals. I got little minis and we're gonna put one on each present and the snowflake for the top of the tree. Now I've got the warm wishes all bubble cut. We took our time to bubble cut that. So I'm going to put that on dimensionals. I want it to stand out because we took the time to um, fussy cut it. So that's what this little strip that you cut on the edge is really good for. And just peel that strip, pop it right on the back of the words. Now we've got peel and stick bubble cut words. It adds a really awesome dimension to our card. And there is design number one. Now, same, or I should say 1A, and here's design 2A. And by the magic of television here, I have my bits prepared to finish the stack. So let's go ahead and bring in our other three cards here and assemble. There's our second one and fourth one. The finishing touch, we've got these gorgeous pastel iridescent gems. Aren't they just the perfect snowy touch? In your packet, you're going to get three colors, 20 of each color, and we're gonna mix them up. You've got lots of these gems, enough to put five on each card. So let's go ahead and we'll do some red ones over here, like twinkly red lights on the tree. And then we'll continue this way. Oh, we have a runaway. I'll put a couple down here. I'm gonna do the same fun red design here. And then we can continue down over here. Let's do some blue. For this one, we can fill in over here if you like. And then white. I love all the sparkle. What do you think? There it is. There's design number one in the kitchen table stamper. Berry Christmas Stampa Stack. If you've got any questions about the project, the Stampa Stack, if there's anything we can do to help you stay crafty, email us, stakecrafty at kitchentablestamper.com. To see if we have class packets left for this Stampa Stack, you can buzz over to kitchentablestamper.com slash shop and then filter for class packets. To shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net and I'll see you in video number two where we'll make this design. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.